Ugly, isn't it? Ugly, isn't it? And in front of me today, I have the complete range of Revelation Racing Supplies Performance Strut and Brake and Rack and Pinion Power Steering Systems. Now these amazingly well engineered and quality built setups will bring the performance of just about any old Ford from the 60s through to the 80s well and truly up to speed and even better than a lot of new cars on the road today. Now there are a lot of other kits on the market but only the RRS systems have 25 years of research and development behind them and full road traffic engineering approval in Australia, New Zealand and the United States. They're guaranteed when you use them within approved limitations and they're fully adjustable and rebuildable. So if you want to bring your old Ford into the new millennium and you want old school cool and muscle with safe state-of-the-art performance and handling, contact RRS and tell them what you want to do and get yourself a kit that suits you. But today, we're going to install a phase three kit and power steering in this old 64 wagon. And we've already chopped out the shock towers using an RRS shock tower notching kit. And under their recommendation, we're about to install the phase three strut and disc brake package. And that includes some big 330 mil lightweight moly carbide rotors, some big mother calipers, chrome silicon steel wire springs, and high performance shocks. And with all that, this old bird's gonna corner like she's on rails and pull up like a feather with a parachute. So let's get into it. Firstly, we'll need to remove the steel sleeve on the inside of the tie rod mount and clean up the possibly rusted edge to make a snug fit for the new rubbers. Supplied with the kit is a small sachet of graphite grease. Liberally apply it to all the moving surfaces. Take the front strut rod and you'll notice there's a slight angle where the rod meets the lower control arm. There is a small indicator stamped into it that denotes the down position. Now before we go any further, there's just one important point I want to make and that's why we're replacing the whole front end rather than just replacing the old upper control arm and spring with a coilover shock. And that's the RRS front strut rod. It really is superior in every way to the old unit. For a start, it's heat treated steel, so it's much, much stronger. It's fully adjustable and the fairly rigid urethane bushes, while they do provide a firm ride, maintain steering geometry much more accurately. So this really is a high performance piece. The same goes for the lower control arm. I mean, you could use the old one, but why would you? RRS's redesigned lower control arm has an oversized bushing, more surface area and a better pressed fit. I mean, you can see why they redesigned it, can't you? Added to that, it's made from thicker gauge steel and has this sexy reinforcement plate for extra good looks, but more importantly, for extra torsional rigidity. Then there's this ball joint, but I'll let Matthew explain that to you later. So with the indicator facing down and the nuts on the tie rod fitted loosely, grease and install the lower control arm bolt followed by the two 7 16 high tensile nut and bolts which connect the front strut rod to the lower control arm. Don't tighten anything yet, just do them up finger tight. Okay, to install the strut. It's worth checking the top of the strut tower for defects in the panels due to Ford's varying pressings for these cars or perhaps some previous accident damage. This car, however, is fine. Slip each spacer between the underside of the chassis and the top of the strut as you install each bolt. Drop the load spreader on and finger tighten the nylock nuts. You can see it all coming together now, can't you? Next, take the steering knuckle, remove the little red cap off the camber adjustment, and then line up all the holes in the bottom of the strut leg. Once you've done this, then that's the end of this part of the installation. You can now torque up all the nuts to their required settings. Molly carbide rotors. Just look at these puppies, they're good looking, aren't they? And lightweight too. This is a phase three, 330 millimeter slotted rotor, and it's about 1.2 kilos lighter than any other 330 millimeter disc. Slip the disc on and tighten it into position with the five nuts and washers supplied with the disc kit. Tighten them evenly, not too much though, opposites as you go. Then remove the nuts and washers and slide the caliper on and install the two bolts to the recommended torque settings that hold on the caliper. 
Now it's time to set up the brake lines. Take the supplied banjo bolt and slip it through the hole with the included washers on both sides of the banjo. Then screw this assembly into the caliper. Then slide the red insulator into its position on the strut to keep your lines out of harm's way. Now we're ready to fit in the brake line bracket. You'll need to drill two small holes for that and wind in a self tapper but here's the tip. Make sure you put it in a place where it won't foul on the tyre. Here you'll need to drill a small hole and wind in the self-tapping screws supplied in the kit. Next, slip the brake line up through the attached bracket and push the horseshoe clip in to secure it to the bracket. Well, how easy was that?